everyone. So, let me find it. This page was the winner. So guys, today what I'm going to work on is the background. Alright, I apologize. I had some colored pencils elsewhere. I had to go grab them, make a full set. So what I'm going to do is I'll pick my colors. And when I pick my colors, I'm going to explain what I'm doing. So I have here this basic set. And we have a background here of a mermaid. And she... She could be at any depth of water. So I'm just going to pick my favorite colors. So I'll pull the PC905 Aquamarine. And I'm going to start off first at the very top of the page. Alright. This is kind of woo. Kind of difficult because it's in a book. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to do a light layer. Pardon me. I'm just trying to do a light layer. Just laying down some color. I'm drawing right through the bubbles. You'll see how I do bubbles later. But for now you can draw right through them. Mm -hmm. So as I color, I hope that you are coloring too. You can look up and watch my progress if you want to, but <coughs> in general, you should also be coloring. And don't worry, I'll let you know when something eventful happens. So, I just posted my last Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. That was the last in that series, so I'm just going to keep moving across the paper. Same pressure and layering. Um, see, so yeah, I just finished the Ivy and the Inky Butterfly, the two-page spread. So I'm going to just continue that format through this coloring page. So I'm going to take you through from start to finish how I do this. So I just continue across the page, and I work from lightest color to darkest color, the lightest color being at the top of the page. I love this aquamarine color, I find it to be a very relaxing color, most like a tropical watercolor.
right, so now what I'm going to do uh let's switch colors. Hold on. Alright, sorry about that. Looks like the light is fading on us, so we may only get so much time left. So for this very first layer, you can see, let me zoom in, I'm not being super careful or perfect about it. So you can see that I'm just blending slowly the different colors together. And perfection for me at this moment is not really a concern. As long as I don't get any dark marks on the paper, I'm very happy with my overall coverage. So in general, the goal for me in this is just to get <clears throat> the page covered with a color that is close to the base color that I want. And I'm blending through so the bottom of the aquamarine gets a, co a coat and I'm just sort of Running through each layer of color horizontally, you want to complete it all the way through the same color. And if possible, also use the same line stroke. So like right now I'm going in like a horizontal sort of back and forth coloring motion. So if I do that in one spot, then do it everywhere. So that way if you do see seams, at least it'll be consistent. And sometimes I'm not coloring for um, perfection. In this case, though, this is pretty easy stuff to fix, so you'll see how I fix it later. <clears throat> Alright, so now here's an overall look at the progress that I've made so far. So we're just coloring in the first layer of the background. And now let's move on to one of my favorite colors of all time. This is, if it will focus, PC903 True Blue. Hello. Hmm. <coughs> Maybe if I 
There we go. So I'm using PC903 True Blue. Let's actually. So I'm using PC903 True Blue. And I'm just going to continue where I left off with the cerulean blue. The binding of the page is the hardest in my opinion, but still try to put down an even col color. So I'm just having fun picking different blues. But I love this true blue and I can layer, I know I can layer this with a lot of other colors. So I'm going to carry this down pretty far. Now I want to make sure to get all of the little nooks and crannies. Much easier to remember what color I'm using right now than have to remember later. Possibly guess incorrectly. So I'm just filling in gaps as I see them. I'm just scanning through the page. I might as well fix this. The color is very similar. I have here a nice sharp pencil. Okay, so I'm going to extend this true blue down. Let's see. Where shall we do it? To mid nose level here? And then do a darker blue down here? Yeah, so let's, let's go all the way down. Let's let's cover the rest of the what I can see of the water here. And again, I'm not worried about being perfect. I'm just enjoying myself. Just laying down a layer of color. Knowing that I'm going to layer many more layers over this. So this is just get me going. So do you like to work in layers too? Is that how you work? Or do you like to go in straight in with the right color right away? I guess I'm a nervous colorist. I like to work in layers. I don't like committing too hard too quickly. Also, I find that the lighter, the lighter touch can kind of offer some more variations on. Like if I make a mistake, I have a little more options on how I can handle it. If I go lighter, then if I do go really hard all at once find that I'm much less able to correct myself okay so I went a little bit darker down below but I like that that makes sense to me so there's that sign <clears throat> so let's take it yeah right to the nose level So the only thing I don't like about books is that you really got to give in that crevice. A lot of the times I just don't want to. So again here I'm not really trying too hard I guess to, to get down into that little crack. I know perhaps I should, but I really just don't. So I find that working in the background first really does help me 
understand what the skin should be like. And now keep in mind that you don't have to use the same set of pencils or the same set of colors. You can pick whatever blues you like. Just do as I do and just gently layer. So just try not to do anything that's too dark that you can't fix later. And just layer it through and at the ends when you're going to blend into the next color just kind of feather it out. So you see how it's darker and then I kind of fade it out. That will allow me to blend it into the next color that's coming below. Really easy way to blend with a colored pencil. So now I think the next color that I'm going to go for is slightly darker yet. I'm going to go for one of my other favorite colors. This is PC906 Copenhagen Blue. I hope that you can see this. Now I'm just going to keep going down. So I'm going to feather in from the other color down. Now I know that this entire video is probably just going to be me layering background colors, which is probably really boring for many of you, and I'm really sorry about that, but I mean, this is, this is what you get with backgrounds a lot, is just a lot of layering of flat color. So I think this is actually a very good background demonstration. Um... Having the patience to lay down one or a gradient of color can actually take some skill, so it's never a bad thing to practice. So if you're not doing this page, but you're doing a different mermaid page or a fishy page or something, you can use the same technique of just picking lighter colors and going down to darker colors. And picking any blues that strike your fancy, you can pick the same blues I do, or you can pick your own. The whole nice thing about coloring is everybody can do it the way that they want to. So when I do these color alongs, of course, you're welcome to copy exactly as I do. And I want you to show me what you do when you're done. You don't have to, but I would love to see it. And you're also welcome to take what I do, learn from it, and come up with your own ideas. I would love to see that. That, that really excites me when that happens. So if you do that... Please comment, send me a link to your work. I want to know all about it. Even if you do a piece that's just inspired by, not a direct copy, still want to understand, see, see what you're doing and how you're learning from me. Alright, so now I'm pretty happy with that and I feathered it out, you see, so... I've gone from this aquamarine down to, to down to a blue. So now I'm going to round it out and really down here at the bottom really make it feel like deeper water. So I'm going to go for a dramatic PC902 ultramarine. This is a very dark color, so I'm going to layer it very lightly 
start out first with just the lightest, bare, the barest feathers touch, and I get so much pigment out of this. Alright, so I'm going to break this clip up into segments, so um, just... Okay, so um, with just the barest feather touch, you really get a lot of pigment out of this color. So I am working in the feather area and laying down my color, my new color, into the feathered area of the Copenhagen Blue. So that's a nice color combo. Copenhagen Blue and Ultramarine mixed together. Very pretty. Okay, so... You can see how it's a it's a tone shift, not just uh it's it's a lot purplier and not so um green. And so it really does add a lot to the page when you add it. Um so I'm gonna keep going and actually extend this all the way down to the bottom. Knowing that as light as a feather touch I'm doing now, I will be layering it with many other colors later. So the trick with background coloring is just to not be afraid. Um, I have done a lot of backgrounds because I'm a painter, so I come into it with a little bit more experience than most. But for this type of simple background, really all you need is a couple of colors and some patience to, to blend it out and to layer it. And what you can get is actually a very spectacular result, so I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. And really the main key factor here is just patience. Just being willing to sit down, take the time. You can see I'm going over the same spot many times. Just layering that color up. I'm still using the flat side of the pencil more than the tip. You can see how I'm using the pencil if I slow it down. So, but here I am working in real time, just having fun, loosely putting color down, not fussing too much about precision, I'm not worried about it too much, I'm just having fun. Putting the color down on the paper. And we're going to get down in these little. I'm going to try my best, but I'm not going to fuss. The thing about these spine books, I've stopped trying to beat myself up trying to get into all those little cracks. If I get in there, I get in there. If I can, I can't. I'm not going to give myself a hard time over it. Okay, so there's some funkiness with the paper, but I don't really care. It doesn't bother me. So I'm just going to touch up some spots here and there. Layer up and darken. And you will see that this is a quick and easy way to start layering 
your watery mermaid background. So I'm going to pull out just so that you can see the whole total effect so far. Really easy and simple. Alright, so um, for right now, it looks like we have sunset happening outside. There's, there's my view out the window. So I'm going to call it quits for today. So that is the first layer of the Hannah Carlson background for the mermaid page. And come and join me tomorrow and I will layer up some more and probably start on the, um, the, uh, foreground stuff. Alrighty. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this and other tutorials that I do, then don't forget to hit the like button. And uh, if you want to see more from me, then go ahead and just subscribe. Way easier than searching for me all the time. And thank you guys so much for watching. I love uh, all your comments and suggestions, so keep them coming. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. I hope you have a magical time coloring. Hello everybody, it's me. So today um, we're going to do another layer um, for this uh, page here, this Hannah Carlson page. And I'm really sorry about the delay for my video. Apparently I recorded it in really high resolution and so it is still exporting. We still have five hours left to go for it. Oh, so um, that is why there's a delay on the Inky Ivy video. I'm actually in my second recording on this one while we wait for that one. Ugh, so what are you going to do? Okay, so for this page, I kind of want to do some brand new colors that I haven't ever used before. So I'm just opening up my new case and picking out some blues. So I'm going to go The first color um, that I'm going to layer over will be, let me move this, so we have more room on here, sorry, okay, so the area that I'm going to be working in, I start from the lightest area and work my way down. The color that I'm going to try out is PC992, that's light aqua, and I have never used these colors except to make swatches, so I really don't know what I'm getting myself into, however, I like the color of the tip, and um, I figure as long as I layer it really lightly, if I don't like it, then there's room for me to make a couple little mistakes, and it'll be just fine. However, I like the way that this is starting to gel and come together. So at this point, I'm trying to even out the layer that I put down before and also just add more darkness and color variation. I am extending down past that other aqua color into the blue, making this light blue area more green. So, at this point here, I know that um, I'm going to be working primarily with a fairly solid blue background. I'm not going to go crazy doing a lot of like seaweed in the background or something because there's just not a, real, a lot of real estate and I want the focus to be on her and her face. 
So this is a really nice simple background if you're looking for a watery background that is nice and simple. This is very similar to the approach I did for the jellyfish background. Except the jellyfish didn't have bubbles. This one has bubbles, so I'll show you how to do those. But right now I'm drawing straight through the bubbles. And just richening up the color and making it more uniform. That's the goal here with this layer. Um, I can extend this color as far down as I feel. Um, I'm just sort of blending the blues and the aquas together so that way they really feel like one cohesive gradient. So I overlap my colors a lot when I layer especially with a gradient like this. Even though it's all blue, there there are a lot of different blues, so you can always layer those up and make it more interesting. Taking care along the sides. So this page for right now is not very interesting, but it will get very interesting pretty quickly. Um, so the plan is, I think I want to start on her face next. Um, I know that that might seem weird to go jump from the background to her face, but generally in portraiture, before I spend a long, long time on the periphery, I like to check and make sure that I get the, the face done correctly, because that, that would stink to work on everything else and then do the face and then mess up, mess up the face and... I find that, um, you know, I'm human, I, I make mistakes too, so I've messed up things before, so what I'm going to do is, after I'm done this basic background layering, the background though is important for me to do first because it gives me a color context and takes all the white out of the paper, um, like, now I'm not working with a white on white on white kind of a situation there's there's some color on the page so it really helps me um, see what colors the the mermaid skin tone could be so that first layer of background really or even this is the second layer of background it really does help me get a good context going for the colors I'm about to lay down so even though I won't do her hair and all the seashells quite yet until I do her face, I do like to get the background started. It doesn't have to be finished by any stretch, but just like to get it started before I do her face. Okay, so I took that aqua pretty much all the way straight down, so I'm going to do the same over here. And this is trickier because it's in the binding of the book. However, I'm not pushing it. I'm just going to go to wherever it's comfortable. I used to try and get down into that little crevice, but no longer. I mean, what's, what's the gain? A couple of centimeters... Okay, so just using the flat side of the light aqua pencil.
I really do love this color. No wonder I put it over the whole entire. Ooh. Okay. So now I'm going to keep going. actually going to break this up into segments. I feel like the videos do a lot better that way, so I'll be right back. Did you miss me? So I'm just going to keep going with this aqua, aqua color. It's um, PC992 Light Aqua. And I'm still going in the same direction. Um, I'm okay with the, the stroke showing, although I do tend to blend them out. But I'm not a, a huge, um, I don't, I don't make everything I do really super smooth all the time. I do tend to let The texture of my pencil show sometimes so and there's a reason for that I I do enjoy texture um, and I find that sometimes if a if a drawing is too shiny all over there's no contrast in textures so sometimes I'll leave the background not burnished and burnish the foreground. So I'm actually considering that here, which is why I am always doing horizontal strokes for the background. Um, when you're doing water, if you work horizontally mostly, then this gives the illusion of movement in the water, so it actually works quite nicely. So I'm considering leaving the background unburnished and just layering it until it's the right color. And if I do that, then I want the strokes to be directional. And in which case, that is why... I am number one not trying to disguise them or try to make it perfect or use small circular motions that's why I'm going back and forth um, around the face I like it to be softer though so you do see me slowing down a little and working that area out Okay, so The trick with this layering of backgrounds is really in patience and really just um, being able to slow down and just understand that you gotta layer the colors. You can't go in very quickly and do things too fast. Sorry, I keep moving off camera. That is a problem with me today, so I gotta watch that. There we go. And 
if I can't get into the little nooks and crannies somewhere, I don't fuss. I'm not worried about being perfect. All I want to do is relax and enjoy my coloring. So, there is no reason to stress. We're going to sit here and just enjoy ourselves. So this light aqua color going over this beautiful deep ultramarine color makes a really nice combination. I believe this was the aquamarine that I put down first. That was yesterday. So I can't believe I'm still waiting for that other video to render. It's taking forever. See, this is why I don't record on the super high resolution because it just guys like what shoots me what takes me a little while to shoot takes me days to render and to export it's crazy all because I just want to edit out some silly bloopers and also put a title on the front and my logo on it that's it but because it has to process the video um, just has to go through that encoding process and it just takes a long time those high res videos also take a lot longer when I'm uploading them to YouTube too so um, I bet you I'll be finished editing and ready to upload this video by the time that one is done which is just crazy to me but um yeah, sorry about that. I don't know what to say. I'm, I should stop giving you approximate ideas for when I'm going to release videos because I just have no idea. So, look right now it says it's at 5 hours and 22 minutes. I started it yesterday. Alright, so, oh, let me just, you know how, so the important thing about art is always taking a step back, and in between layers, and in between doing certain moves, I will just take a step back and look at what I'm doing and see, and this taking a step back and being analytical of your work and seeing what maybe isn't working and what is working before you finish allows you to sort of course correct if there's something that's not working right. You can fix it before you finish. Alright, so let's take a step back and look and see what we have. So we have this beautiful page by Hannah Carlson. I just covered it in... A whole layer of um, light aqua on the background this this pencil here so I cover the entire background with that color um, at this point I know the background is far from finished however I think that um, I am going to start thinking about what colors I'm going to use for the face and I'm going to take you through the process of picking those colors. So um, let me grab my pencils and I'll be right back. Okay, so a lot of people ask me um, how I pick my colors. So I just wanted to go through this process. So, so far, I have just been picking whatever blues and bluey green colors have made me happy. And which the ones that I really like. Um, but now that I have this full set of Prismacolor 150, I thought I would show you guys um, some, some shortcuts to... Now this is going to be watery mermaid skin, so it will be pale and it will have tones of blues and purples in it. Um, 
but I'm going to start out, um, there are some colors that are already in my roll-up that I've been using, um, so I'll probably use some of those. I'm just going to pull some colors and show you my initial thoughts, and then we'll see which ones I actually end up using. So, um, the first one, where's the camera? Uh, is PC 1013, come on, focus, there you go, Deco Peach. I don't know why it's not focusing, there we go. So I'm going to use that one. I would also probably end up using some glues here. Which one is this one? I should get out my... I have a color chart somewhere. There it is. So it looks like I probably want... And the reason I could pick Deco Peach is because I've used that color before quite often. Um, so I want 1001. This is salmon pink. These are the colors that I know and love. So I'll use that. But then I'm also going to go into some new colors that I have not tried before but which look promising based on my color chart. So I'm also going to try Uh, 997 Beige. And I don't like this case. I have another one coming. But this one does help for now. Here we go. So PC 997 Beige. This is a nice cool tone, which will help me. Um, another color that I would like to try... Because we're underwater, I think this will be a nice one. PC 1017 Clay Rose. So what I'm doing here is I'm just sort of going through and trying to picture all of the t skin tones that I'm going to need to make her face. Um, look like it's underwater. So I'm also going to need this PC 1025 Periwinkle. Now I've never used that color, however, I have it here on my color chart. I think it will be quite nice, so I'm going to give it a go. Um, another color which I think will also help me with the underwater looking part of her skin. Let me see. Let's see, where are you? I think also this PC 919 non-photo blue. I don't know why they call it a non-photo blue, but I'm going to try out this pencil as well. I think also on top of all these other colors I also want to try this PC 920 light green And now you can see what I'm doing here. As I, I've been collecting them, I've just been placing them on the book. And I'm seeing how everything is starting to sort of come together. So you can see all the different colors that I've already picked. Um, so this is the color of the background that we were just using. And I kind of placed it there so I could see how the colors would look together. 
So as I go through, I keep adding them to the pile just so I can see how they look all together in context. Um, this helps me choose them as I go. Um, so now also, um, I will want some, um, some darker colors, so I want this slate gray, this gray looks so pretty, it's got some blue in it, I just think it will be perfect for this particular project, so I would like to give it a shot, this is PC 936 slate gray. Another color that I would like to try, where is it? It's one of these really dark blues, here it is. And this here is almost like a purple blue, it looks like it's PC 208. Non anthrone, anthrone blue. I think that might help me with some colors. And I think just to round it out and to give myself I think the other colors are in my other my roll up here. Yep, so then all the other colors that I think I'm going to need are probably in this roll up here. So that's how I pick my colors. Um, I just go ahead and I consult my color chart and I think about the colors that I'm going to be and then I pick them ahead of time. Now I do, this this pile will change, um, so I don't always stick to my guns when I am um, picking colors. Um, however, um, I'm going to leave this color chart out and handy for myself so that way if I need it I can grab it. So this pile of pencils here is a very, very oceany palette. You can see it's mostly blues, greens, and then like peaches and sand colors. So this is the set that I think I should start with, with her face. So um, now, let's just bring this. Okay. So let's take a short break and find a little spot to put these in, and then I'll be right back. Alright, so I, f I just um, emptied out my little um, tin and put them in, or er, this little ceramic jar that I have. I love it, so I just um, emptied that out and put my selected pencils in here for now. Um, so now looking at this, I have to choose what direction the light's going to be coming from because right now the background is pretty flat, just a gradient, so it really does allow me to pick pretty much any light direction. So I think because of the drama of it, she's looking back here, I think I'm going to have the light coming in sort of this angle, so this side of her face will be in shadow, this area of her neck will be in shadow, and then everything here will be in the light and, and all of this will catch the light. I think that's going to be the, um, the, the way that I go on this. So um, keeping that in mind, I'm going to give you guys a little bit more of a pulled out view of how I work because um, I just want you to see sort of like the overview of my process. And then um, as I get into the nitty gritty, then I will zoom in and um, really get us going on the, um, the basics. So what's interesting to me is I'm actually doing this sideways, so that should be fun. But what I do is I pick a fairly medium tone color. So I'm just going through and I'm going to pick something that has some warmth to it. Because I like the skin, the undertone of the skin to feel warm. And even though she is a mermaid, I want her to feel 
like she is um, a living breathing thing so I'm going to start out with um, PC where's the camera PC 1001 salmon pink I don't know if you can see this there we go so now I'm just going to go through and um, pick the areas that I think would be in the darkest darks, but I'm not going to press super hard. This is just about me exploring where the lights and dark shadows go. So if you pick a medium tone color and go pretty light, then it's actually a fairly lightweight result. But once I, once I fill in all of the areas that I think will be dark, then when I take a step back, if something looks funny, it's really easy to correct it. And that has happened, and that is totally fine. So now I know that around the eye socket will be dark, so that's why I'm going in. And now I'm just drawing on my knowledge of human anatomy. This is something that I've learned over time with study. However, if you're stuck on this and you don't know how to approach it, you can always look up reference photos or take a look at yourself in the mirror. It's easier to take some photos of yourself. Okay, so, so now I'm going to come along the edge of the nose, but I'm not going on the nose, just, just to the side of it. This cheek here, now it will have some light on it. But not much, it'll be like a... So this is the, the shadow cast from the nose. And then I'm going to go right across the face, down here below the cheekbone. And so what ends up being in the light is like this little like funny little triangle. Okay, so now we're coming to the area of the mouth. So that this is kind of tricky. So what I like to do is I actually like to draw a light line in between the corner of this side of the mouth and the bottom of the nose. And then I just extend that out like so. All still using the same color just to lay down the basic idea. So now I'm going and again the chin can be kind of tricky so what I do is I just do this little half moon sort of shape and just under the lips. Okay and now also this side of the forehead and I'm leaving the hair and the eyebrows until later may make it look a little weird for right now but you'll see if you treat both the hair and the eyebrows at the same time then they look more cohesive Okay, so already I'm starting to bring out some dimensionality to her face, however I, I definitely want to get into the um, this side, I've only really done the dark side so far, so now I want, since the light is coming from here, there will be a cast shadow from her hair onto the forehead so let's lay that in and there is also some curvature to her forehead so we just want to address that as well and also the cast shadow of this bit of her hair okay Now you may be shocked to see how bright this color is, however, I'm going to layer it up with many other colors, so it won't be this peachy.
but it's nice to start it out with a very warm color just to give it um, some real dimension and depth. I'm avoiding the little dots. I haven't decided what I'm going to do about those yet on her face. So when I haven't decided, I avoid. <laughs> Okay, so now um, I'm going to start working that shadow that I had from the hairline into the corner of that eye, like so, because even though this side of the face is in the light, that eye socket will still have some darkness. And it travels on through to her nose and just sort of giving a sense of curvature. Again, just trying to establish where the lights and darks go. I'm not trying for a fully realized shading job quite yet. Just trying to get a handle on where they belong and where they're gonna go. Okay, so now this bit of hair kind of falls away from the face, so I'm gonna give it more room for that shadow. And this shadow here We'll go like so. Okay, so now Now I'm just sort of trying to get a general idea. See, this is where the nose ends. So now, there will be like a little just sort of generally block in some Shadow, see where, see how it looks, refine the shape, darken it. So, so here it's all about just kind of mushing things around until they really do feel quite right. Okay, so and at this stage it doesn't have to look perfect. In fact, most of the time my my work never looks really great until the very end. Um, that's totally fine. You do not have to worry if you are the same. So now I'm just sort of putting in the refining shadows and highlights really just the highlights are just the absence of any pencil right now okay that tricky area right around the mouth And now this layer of pencil that I've put down is by no means finished. There's a lot left to be desired. 
but I did get the basic general light and shadow on her face so that I could see how I'm going to work in the other darker colors. And this this method of just laying laying in with a lighter pencil first really does kind of give you like a fail safe if you do mess up. No big deal. Um, really easy to just mush things around and all of a sudden it's fine. So now you can see where the darker spots. So let's just make sure to make sure to do everything that you do to her face to her other areas of her body um, otherwise they can look weird or discolored later if you don't have the same type of layering Okay, so we have a general idea for where the shadows are going to go. And anything that stands out, you can fix right now, and it's really easy. All right, and then, um, so, let's see, what, where are we doing on time? We're doing okay, actually. Um, so, now... I always find it very difficult to work on um, a face without having the eyes finished. That's just me personally. So let's go ahead and now start just getting, we don't have to finish it, but let's just get a base idea for how the eyes are going to look. So I'm going to go in. We're switching colors now. PC 1017 Clay Rose. And I'm going to go into the corners. And then extending from the corner out. Just put a dark shadow just underneath the eyelash line. Now whatever I do to one eye, I always make sure to do to the other. That way I don't have to remember later what I've done. Makes it a lot easier for me. Okay, so now I'm going to come around the bottom. Kind of just shade. More on the bottom. Now for the other shading in the eye, I want to take it more into the blue spectrum because she's underwater, so I'm going to use PC 936 Slate Gray. And this is definitely a lot bluer than that clay rose I was just using.
So the trick is this, even though the white of her eye is white, it takes on a lot of reflective color. So the clay rose was reflecting the color on the inside of her eyelids. And now this slate gray is the color reflected um, of the water on her eyes. And so even though something is white, it is never truly white. Okay, and now I'm going to go in with just a pop of PC 955 Mulberry, just on the inner corners. in with the slate gray and just go ahead and shade that out So you may think that these eyes look too dark right now, and in context with everything else they do, but you'll see that I just have experience doing this over time, you'll get a sense for how dark things are. With the, with the rest of it, it will come together. Alright, I'll break it up, so let's, I'll be So right. to make these whites look a little less weird, let's, let's fill in some color and really give it some dimensionality. The next color that I'm going to pick is a new color that I've never used before. This is PC208 in Nanthrone Blue. This is a nice dark blue. So I'm going to use it for just underneath her eyelashes. Now you can see there's a bright spot here, so I'm going to actually encircle that and make sure that I keep that white. So just under her eyelashes will be the darkest color because it's in the shadows. So I like to establish the darkest color first, just so I know sort of my point of reference. Now let's let's move on to the lightest color. So I think for her eyes, I want them to be a really beautiful light blue. So I'm going to start off with 1025 Periwinkle. And the lightest color in, in people's eyes is actually right below the very bottom right here sort of wherever the opposite of that little bright spot is okay and now I'm also going to grab this really beautiful PC 919 non photo blue. And just layer that up with the periwinkle, give it a really nice bright color. Okay, so now I've established the lightest and the darkest areas of the eyes. So now let's go ahead and fill it in. Um, for that, 
I think I'm going to actually take it a little bit more into the, um, where is it, the greeny realm. Where is that one color? Pardon me while I look for a color. Here we go. I'm going to grab PC1027 Peacock Blue. This is a little bit of green in it. I thought that might be a nice touch. So now I'm going to just go around the very dark edges and just give a light layer. I'm pressing with medium. heaviness or pressure. Now I'm also going around the inner circle, the black circle, and going over the black circle. So let's do that on the other eye, because remember whatever we do to one eye, we must do to the other. Um, unless you want them to be different colors for a specific reason, um, it will look funny, it will look like there is a mistake been made. Okay, so now I'm also going to go around for a white splotch here, kind of give it some differentiation. And now I think I'm going to come back in, oh, let's just fix that real quick. So right here should be darker. Like that. And now I'm going to come in with my very dark, dark blue again. So this is the PC208 Anthrone Blue. And just fleck in some little starburst. Just to give her eyes some life. And just darken up some of the areas that really feel like it needs like a punch of contrast. Alright, so now those eyes are starting to come to life and I feel a little bit better about them. So now that I'm fairly satisfied, um, I can go in and now start working in my um, skin. So um, yeah, so what I do here, I'll, I'll pull back so that way you can kind of get a sense of the overall. So what I do is, the reason why I establish the eyes first is then once I see how the eyes look, then I know um, really the re how the rest of the face is going to flow because now I've established the light, the shading, the different undertones of different colors. So I, I know I'm going to use that slate gray a lot. Um, so yeah, I just uh, I just wanted to kind of show you guys why I pick the eyes first. The eyes to me are the windows to the soul. So if I if I don't nail them um, right away. And then I really feel discouraged about the piece and I t t generally tend to not finish it. So I think for my beautiful, lovely um, mermaid, I want to give her skin a little bit more of a um, sort of like a greeny, bluey, purpley kind of look. Um... And I have to decide what color her hair is going to be, so that's going to have an effect on everything, too. But for right now, I'm going to now start working in the um, reflected uh, back light area. So this area here, uh, well, let me see if I can zoom in a little more and get you guys situated. It's tough with the book. Okay. 
so I think I'm going to pick her to have some lovely sand colored hair maybe maybe some brown sand kind of color okay but anyway we'll we'll see how that develops as I go um, right now what I'm doing now is just putting this uh, PC 992 light aqua on the edge of her skin where it will have some backlighting and this is just to tell myself later on as I am shading in darker hey hold up reserve some of this this might be lighter so what I like to do is even subjects that are lit from a certain area I do like to use some backlighting as a way to give more dimensionality to the face so if this is something that doesn't interest you then you can skip it however I like doing it so I'm going to show you how I do it alright I also feel like this helps make her really feel like she is underwater and not just with a blue background. I like when the when the water interacts with the skin color. It makes it feel a little more realistic. So now I really like this light aqua color and I feel like it's meshing well with that skin tone so I think that's going to be my sort of so I think that's going to be my sort of highlight tone. So I'm also going to really gently go in and layer some of that color right over the slate gray in her eye. And again, I'm going to do that over here. So that's what I meant when I said I'm not done yet, but I lay a good foundation. And then what I d like to do is I like to try and layer just about every color into the eyes I feel like it really does give them a lot of life okay so now that I've got my base areas for where my shadows go that's already established I've got my basic eyeball um, going and now I have the, um, the highlight and shadow color will be like an aqua type tone really starting to feel happy with this um, looking at everything, I think I do want to stick with a very um, neutral hair color. And I think picking a light sand color might actually be good because then I can show you how to get rid of a lot of these light lines with um, white gel pen later. So I think that that's going to be the direction that I'm going to go with this drawing. So, um, I think I'm going to take a break for right now and come back to this later, but um, I hope that you're enjoying the new um, uh, real-time demo of my Hannah Carlson uh, Little Mermaid here, and um, I hope to see you guys soon, so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more. And um, also, uh, don't forget to leave a comment if there's something that you want me to go over or something that um, you want to see me do. Other than that, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys watching and taking your time out to uh, spend a little time with me. So I hope you have a wonderful, magical time coloring. Bye!